It's Dr. Senta. I hope you're all doing great on this Thursday, oh my gosh, Wednesday night. And today we are going to talk about bioidentical hormones. It's been a while since I've done a Facebook Live, but I am very excited to do this and to be able to help you out um, with fatigue, insomnia, for women, hot flashes and night sweats and those kind of fun things. And uh, for men, uh, strength. Uh, depression, any type of sexual dysfunction, all of those things are made better by bioidentical hormones. So let's get started. If you have any questions, just stick them in the chat room. And we already have quite a few that were sent in. And I thank um, any of you who have done that. And um, away we go. So first of all, uh, just to let you know a little bit about um, Medical Weight Loss of New York. So we do medical weight loss, but we also do bioidentical hormone therapy. And we added it about nine years ago. And the reason why we added it was because we felt that there was a, an area there that we needed to help with weight loss that also helped people get sleep and, um, and feel their best. And um, it was sort of a missing piece for us. So we have enjoyed doing these for nine years. I personally have enjoyed getting them um, for almost the, the entire time we've been doing them. And um, it really is a game changer in how you feel and how you live your life. So um, I absolutely love it. And I can tell you this, you know, with weight loss, it can take some time to, to for people to kind of kick in and see results. But with bioidentical hormones, you can actually get somebody feeling better within the matter of a week. I mean, that quick. So it is a wonderful thing to do. And I absolutely love, love, love doing it. So, all right, so a lot of people have asked me um, the term bioidentical, what does it mean? And, and sometimes when you hear hormone therapy, you think like, oh God, that's scary, you know, heart attacks and strokes and all these terrible things are gonna happen, cancers. And um, first of all, we're gonna talk about the myths at the end, but that's simply not true, okay? And especially when you do something that is bioidentical. So bioidentical means the same as what's in the body. Okay, the hormones that we do have actually one main ingredient and that's it. And if you've ever seen one of my previous videos, you recognize these guys <laughs> and they're yams. And so the hormones that we use that come in pellet form have um, the, uh, ma the main ingredient is yams and the only other ingredient is stearic acid, which holds the pellets together and that's it. And these are wild yams, they're grown in Mexico. They um, tend to, ha to harbor a lot of um, the sterols, which is what we need, the estrogen and testosterone, which is what comes in pellet form. So um, two ingredients, same as, as, um, as what our body produces and very different from the studies that you may have heard about in the early um, 2000s and um, you know, 20, 2000 to 20, 2010 when we had all that bad data going on about hormones. But you got to remember those hormones were not bioidentical, they were different. So, um, hello, Mary Jo. Blessings to you. And um, anyone who has any questions, just pop them into the chat room as we go. Um, so first of all, uh, you know, I always get the question about what are the benefits to bioidentical hormones? And um, so I'm going to give it to you for both men and women, and they can be used for both. Remember that. There's two, uh, there's two main ingredients that we use, testosterone and estrogen. And I will tell you most of the time, even for the women, probably 85 to 90% of the time, we can cure what we need to uh, symptomize with just the testosterone. But the benefits are improved energy, who doesn't want that, right? Improved sense of well-being, um, improved sleep, huge, huge improvement in sleep. In fact, I wanna show you something. Hopefully it'll show pretty well here, but um, if you can see here, the estrogen component actually kicks in very quickly. Let me go over here. Um, within a matter of, that's weeks, within a matter of days, the estrogen kicks in. And estrogen is responsible for sleep. The testosterone takes about four weeks to kick in. But um, so I can, when I told you that we can really get people feeling better in the matter of a couple of days, it's true, especially if it involves sleep. So sleep is a big, a big uh, problem for a lot of folks these days. And people are very fatigued for a lot of reasons. So, and then um, mental clarity. So mental clarity, including memory, focus, word finding, um, improved libido and sexual function is made better by bioidentical hormones. Increased muscle mass, weight loss, because with increased muscle mass comes better metabolism, which causes weight loss. And then um, better exercise tolerance. So when you go and do your workouts, you come back feeling you know, like you hardly did anything with better results. So that's also a wonderful advantage. So that is for men and women. For women alone, of course, if you have hot flashes or night sweats, again, if you remember that graph I just showed you, two to three days, estrogen hits its peak, and those, those are usually gone if we get that dosing right. 
And then um, resolution of, uh, this is interesting, osteopenia and osteoporosis. So if you add bioidentical hormones, you can actually not only resolve um, osteopenia, but you can resolve osteoporosis over time. So it's a very important reason to do the hormones. Improvement in incontinence and um, a more youthful glow. Who doesn't want that? More skin elasticity. So it's a wonderful anti-aging uh, component as well. And then if you're a migraine headache person, improved um, improvement with migraine headaches. So all of those things are, um, are benefits to doing bioidentical hormones. So um, we have a couple questions. Um, hi, Anne, and hi, Kate. So Kate, how is the treatment given and how often? That is an awesome question. So how often, for women and men, it's different. So the treatment is given in pellet form. So what happens is we actually, um, we anesthetize the skin with a little bit of lidocaine and then a very small incision. It goes right under the skin and it lasts for three to five months for women. And the beautiful thing about the hormones is after we close it with steri strips, you wait about two or three days and you can do whatever you want to do activity wise. And, um, and the levels are, are delivered very, very uniformly. The hormones never go up and down. They just stay exactly the same for the whole three to five months. So it peaks and then it stays the same and you feel amazing. So, um, so that, and then where can you get these? Okay. So at our office here, <laughs> Medical Weight Loss of New York and Syracuse, if you look up bioidentical hormones and type in um, your area, if you're from a different state, you should be able to find somebody who does them in your area. There are a lot of us across the country who do them. Um, if you're in a smaller town, you may have to travel. We have people that come to us from as, as far away as, you know, different places in Canada, Vermont, and, and um um, Virginia. So there's some places that don't offer them, um, Toronto. So, um, but, uh, you should be able to find something hopefully close to where you live. Um, Hey, Hey Sam, <laughs> nice to see you. So Kate asked if it, ex if it is expensive. It's actually not. Um, it's very reasonably priced and it's very rare for us to not have somebody come back a second time. And, um, I will tell you for both men and women, the, um, the average price is somewhere between 80 and and $100 a month um, uh, if you were to space it out over time. So uh, it is a very, very good investment. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep going with the questions that I have, if that's okay. And then as more pop in, then we'll just take them as we go, all right? So um, we already talked a little bit about what is bioidentical hormone therapy, but I'll just mention it again. So Bioidentical hormone therapy is a form of hormone therapy that uses small pellets that are delivered under the skin. It goes right, I'll just show you, right, right in that area, right above any place that you would sit. Very, very tiny, they're the size of Tic Tacs, usually just a couple, and they, um, you close with steri strips. You don't have to put stitches, nothing like that. Very, very small incision, and they stay there for three to five months, delivering um, a very sustained release of... These yams. <laughs> so, um, and this is where we get the bioidentical from if you missed um, yam sterile. So it's very safe and very effective. And um, it brings you back to the levels you had in your early 20s. So it really makes you feel awesome. For women, we give testosterone. And if you need estrogen, as I mentioned at the beginning, we usually will, will do about 85% just testosterone only because it actually fixes a lot of the problems. Um, but if you need the estrogen too, because we can't get you sleeping, on um, the testosterone alone or your hot flashes and night sweats are, are too too much for the testosterone to take care of, then we add some estrogen. Or if you have um, migraine headaches or osteopenia, osteoporosis, those are all reasons to add estrogen too. Um, so Sam asked, is bioidentical hormone therapy safe? And I love this question because I can tell you unequivocally that it is very, very, very safe. And um, the, as I told you at the beginning, the predominant hormone that we use is testosterone, which is a very safe hormone. And we use estrogen a little bit, but the estrogen, again, is delivered in a plant-based form, which is identical to what the body makes. Very different from some of the things that you have um, read about, oral um, premarin and other um, other um, new, um, pharmaceuticals that are made from, believe it or not, horse urine. So it's not the same. The bonds are different and um, it doesn't mimic what the body makes. So very, very safe and very, very awesome. Let me see if we have, um, do you need to get special blood work? 
Uh, so Mary Jo asked you, do we need to get special blood work? And the answer is yes, you do. So I'll tell you the blood work that, um, that we need. So at our office, we um, titrate the bioidentical hormone specifically to um, what your levels are and then what your weight is in your utilization. So the labs that you need to order are, I'll, I'll, I'll ring them out to you and then that way you can tell your provider to get them and they have to be ordered before 10 a.m. because then we will get very accurate levels. But they are FSH, F is in Frank, SH, um, LH. Then you need a testosterone free in total. You need an estrogen or estradiol and we usually will get a CBC, complete blood count. We'll get thyroid panel as well. And for men, we get a prostate-specific antibody at PSA. So um, for women, everything but the PSA. So hopefully I got it right. Let me just say it again. FSH, LH, estrogen, testosterone-free in total, complete blood count. And then for men, PSA. So hopefully that helps you. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Next question was, um, I love this question. So does bio or, or does, does hormone dysregulation lead to insomnia? So um, the answer is unfortunately yes. So um, one of the things that I see the most in my practice today is people who are not sleeping and are very, very, very fatigued. And I think that's happening, um, I mean, related to the environment we're in, but um, also hormone dysregulation, especially when your estrogen is very low, can lead to insomnia. So you may have trouble falling asleep or you may fall asleep, but then just keep waking up and not be able to stay asleep. So testosterone can convert to estrogen, which takes care of that for most people. But if, you don't, if we don't get your estrogen high enough to take care of it, we can also add a low dose of estrogen as well. So, um, and again, if you remember that picture I showed you, and next time we'll do this in a different way so I don't have to flash it, but the estrogen, which is the red line there, it's just a matter of a couple of days where it peaks. And do you see how nice and flat that is for both the estrogen and the testosterone? So the testosterone peaks at four weeks. But you see very steady state levels. You're not gonna be going up and down. It's not gonna be, you know, like you're feeling like a crazy person. You're gonna feel really good and it's gonna stay that way. And um, it's very much individualized based on your own blood work. I did mention utilization. And the reason is if you're a big exerciser, your um, heart rate is up a lot because you're exercising, doing other things, or have a very stressful uh, job and you're running around a lot, you utilize it faster. So that all goes into the formula of what we calculate for you. Okay, Maggie Yates, how are you, my dear? It's nice to see you there. All right, so put the questions in the, um, in the, oh wow, I'm missing some of these. Okay, let's see, treatment given, we already said, oh, how often we did that one, okay. And, okay, hang on one second, I'm sorry. Um, special blood work I answered. I think I got most of these. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Uh, next question is, um, so Sarah actually uh, asked, how often do I come in for pellet insertions? And so for women, it's every three to five months and it's completely dependent on your symptoms. So what I usually tell people the first time is, um, you know, come get your insertion. We check your blood work at the four week mark because at the four week mark, that's when everything peaks. So four weeks is that number right there. Oh my gosh, it's hard because everything's backwards, but Four weeks, ah, there we go. Um, everything peaks, so we check it at four weeks and then we usually see people back at six weeks. But for most people, for most women, it's somewhere around four months, somewhere between three and five. So I have some patients who are so um, sensitive to their hormones that they come in right at the three month mark. Someone like me, I get um, testosterone only and it usually lasts me five months. So anywhere in between um, that is, uh, is when you come back in. And I will tell you, a hundred percent. It is very rare we don't have someone, both male and female, come back in because it is such a, an important part of um, improving your sense of well-being. I believe it's a really well, um, well-hidden secret. Now I am going to move this up, and I don't know. Give me one second just to go down here because this screen is making it look like it's cutting off my head. All right, let's keep going. First one, first Facebook Live in I don't know, maybe three years. So. Cut me some slack. <laughs> All right, next one is, um, James asked, how do I know I'm a candidate for pellets? So um, so the, the symptoms are different for men and women, 
But um, for men, it's fatigue, weight gain, poor results from workouts. So you do a workout and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to work out again for another week. That's a sign. Um, decreased muscle strength and, you know, decreased libido. You don't really care if you're having sex. And if you do have it, you don't really enjoy it. You don't, um, for men, they get sometimes erectile dysfunction, um, anorgasm, all those kind of things um, can be related. And um, the other part related, um, which we talked a little bit about, is mental function. So um, a mental clarity, mental focus, word finding is improved, memory is improved, all of those things. And when they're low, um, you know that you, you probably need some testosterone. And also like just depression and just a yucky sense of, you know, kind of feeling like, bleh, you know. Um, for women, same type of symptoms, but it's, um, but it's hot flashes, night sweats, we get this super obnoxious abdominal weight gain. So what happens is as we start to go through menopause, we start to store weight like men do, and we start to get it right around our bellies. It is absolutely fixable. When you get your hormones fixed, um, that starts to go away. Part of the reason why we store that way has to do with the testosterone dropping, and testosterone is responsible for um, our metabolism. So you have to replace testosterone in addition to possibly also replacing estrogen. But testosterone is our dominant hormone, which we'll talk about. Um, and which you probably never heard about because a lot of times it's not, it's not even spoken about. Okay, so um, Robin asked, let me make sure there's no more. Oh, there's a, there is a question. Can it help with anxiety and depression? And um, hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. And hi, Ern. Um, yes, it absolutely can help with anxiety and depression and in both men and women. And here's why. So this is kind of a cool thing if you like chemistry, but um, estrogen actually um, met mimics, doesn't metabolize, but it mimics serotonin. So serotonin is our feel good chemical. It's responsible for our sense of well-being. It's responsible for our sleep, all those things. So when your estrogen or testosterone is down, then your serotonin is down. So if you bring them back up, you're going to bring your serotonin up and it's going to help definitely with anxiety and depression. Now, as I say that, I will also say if you have a strong family history of anxiety and depression and you had it before your hormones changed, then hormones may not fix your anxiety and depression completely. But if you are going through menopause or you, if you have low T as a man, then um, anxiety and depression can definitely be helped by um, hormones. Okay, so hopefully I answered that right. Um, what symptoms do you get when you are low on estrogen? That's an awesome question, Kate. So it is very different. Um, so when you're low on estrogen, the big things that you get, number one is insomnia. So, and that can kind of creep up on you. So you can start to like maybe wake up once in the middle of the night and then, you know, have a little trouble go back, going back to sleep. And then you wake up twice and then you have trouble falling asleep. So as that keeps happening and progressing, estrogen can make that better very, very quickly. Um, the other thing that goes along with low estrogen are hot flashes and night sweats. And then um, for some women, so estrogen actually holds the bladder um, and improves the bladder muscle. So as your estrogen goes, you can start to get incontinence as well. Another sign is um, migraine headaches that start to get much more severe. So that's also something that we see with um, lower estrogen. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Kate. Okay. And um, if, you, if you ask a question that I don't, because I can't see them all right now, but if you ask one that I didn't answer, just ask it again, and I promise I'll get to it, okay? Well, let me pull myself back up here. All right, let's keep going. I, I love hormones, so anything you want to ask, I'm happy to answer. Um, okay, so Craig asks, do I have to get blood work done before each treatment? So no, the answer is once we have you on a, on a schedule where we have your dosing right, so for most people, it may take a, a time or two to get it exactly where you want it, where it just takes care of all your symptoms. Once you're there, then we only do annual blood work. Before that, we do blood work at the beginning to see where you're starting from. We draw again at four weeks where that peak was that you saw, and then we bring you back at six weeks, see how you're feeling, see what the levels look like. If you need a booster at that time, we'll do it. Then we'll do blood work for the next one. If you end up getting the same dosing and feel great, we won't do it again um, for another year. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, okay. 
Check real quick. Um, so insurance. So there's always questions about does insurance cover um, bioidentical hormones? And it is really very dependent upon your insurance policy. Um, so what you need to do is call your insurance company and ask them if they cover hormone replacement therapy. Our practice, we are out of network. However, we um, give you everything you need in order to get reimbursement paperwork wise. And we do see a lot of our patients getting reimbursed by their insurance company. So um, so I am hopeful that it, that you will get reimbursed. If you don't get reimbursed, um, you know, we, we, we do the best we can to provide you everything you need. But I'm telling you it is well worth worth the 80 to 100 dollars a month to, to feel this good all the time. So um, hopefully um, you can you can find a way to make it work one way or another. But um, unfortunately, I can't answer, uh, you know, unequivocally that it's it's covered. It really is insurance dependent. All right. Do I need an endocrinologist to do this? What type of doctor should I look for in my area? Um, okay, so Ern, um, so you don't need an endocrinologist. As a matter of fact, most endocrinologists do not do bioidentical hormones. So the best um, person to find is someone who, if you just look up bioidentical hormones, as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't know if you were on, and your area, you should be able to find someone who does them in the area. But Oftentimes you're going to find someone who's either um, family practice or integrative medicine or um, ob -GYN. So it's a good place to start there. But um, boy, it is really, if there's ever doctors that I fight with as I do these hormones, it's ob -GYNs because sadly, and I can tell you this as a family practitioner, that field, all right, sorry men if you're on here, but um, that field is run still mostly by men, and um, and they don't think think that women need testosterone in this. You know, even though the studies have shown it over and over again, and so they fight this. Um, and so this has been my experience. The other, so so the reason why I'm saying that is because they're they're running the show at the top, and they dictate the policy for the rest of the OB guys who are practicing across the country, or you know, even the world in some cases. So this is something that kind of falls under the integrative, more natural or anti-aging approach. But in reality, testosterone specifically is such an important hormone for our bodies, and we are um, so many of us are so deficient. Um, and, it, and it really helps so much with, with, with brain function and all the other things I talked about. So it is hugely important. So if you can find somebody, um, it is well worth, worth it. And if you can't, find a way to get to me and I'll take care of you, <laughs> regardless of where you live. And we'll go out and we'll have a good time. Okay, so um, that is, um, thank you very much for that question, Ern. And um, Jennifer asked, how long will the treatment last? And I think I covered this. So it depends upon your dosing and um, your utilization and um, just your individual you know, body type. As I may have mentioned, we, we base our dosing on all of your individual blood work and a bunch of questions that we ask you. As I said, we've been doing this for nine years, so we get it right usually pretty quickly within the first or second visit. And then most people stay at that dose for the rest of the time. Now, if you're someone who starts out very inactive and then you start like a program like CrossFit and you become very active, your dosing is going to go up. Or if you struggle and uh, can't, get, can't get to the office and you go too long, then the dosing might go up the next time. But by and large, if you stick to a regular schedule, your dosing um, remains the same. So it's every three to five months for women, every six to eight months for men. They get more hormones um, and uh, they last longer. So that is why it's different. Let me see anything else in there. Could could you have weight gain when using testosterone pellets for women? That is a great question, Christy. Um, so the short answer is the very first time you get bioidentical testosterone, you're going to increase your muscle. And with that muscle comes some water weight gain. Okay, so what we do in our practice is um, to avoid that water weight gain, because it can freak you out, it can be a couple pounds sometimes, um, we'll give you a diuretic that will help get rid of that before it even shows up, and it also helps mitigate any kind of acne or anything that you could potentially get. And then you can take that as needed afterwards. The muscle mass, however, this is the best part, and um, very predictable visit to visit. The muscle mass increases metabolism. So then at the subsequent visits, we see fat loss and we see muscle increase and then we see overall weight loss. So it's an awesome adjunct to a weight loss practice and that's one of the reasons why we added it. So I do hope that answers your question, Christy. 
Okay, so, um, okay, how are the pellets administered? So I think I covered this, but I'll just uh, tell you one more time. So um, what we do is we make a very tiny incision, like the tiny, and um, it goes right, okay, I'm gonna show you my body, sorry. <laughs> but it goes right there, okay? Um, and we switch, we rotate sides every three to five months. And, um, it's the, the incision is super small. The pellet gets after, after we anesthetize the area, very sterile, um, procedure. We, um, it, the whole thing takes literally about two minutes, like, um, maybe five at the most. We put the pellets in a trocar, we slide them under, we steri strip the area, and then we put a pressure dressing on. And within three days, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even think about it. You don't feel it. And um, we wait until you're, you know, starting to feel your symptoms again. And then we bring you back, recheck your blood work, and then redose you. So um, it's really easy peasy. And it's, um, I'm telling you, you feel so good. It is a game changer in life. Um, okay. You're welcome, Christy. So what if I have had breast cancer is a question that I got earlier. So as a breast cancer survivor, I can tell you that testosterone is actually protective. And one of the therapies they used to use to treat metastatic breast cancer is testosterone. So um, testosterone, you definitely can get if you're a breast cancer survivor, um, uh, hands down. And as I mentioned, it takes care of 85% or 85% of the folks um, get their, all their symptoms cured with um, testosterone. Some studies show as high as 90. Um, if you are um, a breast cancer survivor, I probably would not do estrogen, but there are some, uh, even though it is bioidentical and it's a safer form and there's many forms of estrogen, there are some doctors who have been um, oncologists who have had patients with estrogen negative breast cancers who have said absolutely they can do it. It has nothing to do with their cancer. So it really is dependent on um, what type of breast cancer you had. Okay, so what if I'm already on hormone replacement therapy, some sort of cream or patches and pills, can I still do bioidentical hormones is the question that I got. And the answer is absolutely 100% yes. So we actually have a formula that we do that converts people from different forms, whether you do it on your skin or do it um, with a patch or, or on birth control pills, we know how to convert it. So the day that you come in would be the last day you would use those products and then we would We'll switch you over to the hormones and then check you. So um, there's no problem with that at all. Okay, what if you have factor V Leiden? So factor V Leiden um, is not a, a problem with testosterone therapy. And actually, here's something very interesting, I think. Um, oral estrogen is what causes the hypercoagulability with estrogen because it goes through the liver. Okay, so if you are doing either a patch of estrogen or doing estrogen through pellets, because it's bypassing the liver, it does not increase coagulation at all. So you would absolutely be a candidate for that. And I, I don't know what's going on. I'm seeing a lot more factor five Leiden lately. Um, uh, and hopefully you're taking an, an aspirin a day, an Anja, if I'm saying your name right. Um, just a baby aspirin a day is probably a good idea if you have a factor five Leiden. I, they used to put people on anticoagulants and they don't anymore, uh, which is good because those are a pain. Lori went, my dear friend. So um, if you don't take any hormones during menopause, what happens? Can you recommend alternative like diet and exercise? So um, hormones, so you can go through menopause, you know, with or without hormones. Um, the risk of not replacing your hormones, especially on your bone health, is, is extremely, you know, important. So is, if you go through menopause early, so I have some women who have gone through it, menopause in their early 30s because they had a hysterectomy for endometriosis or whatever and they took their ovaries as well so they're really at risk for um, having osteopenia or osteoporosis and having a fracture early on in life so um, it's super important that you um, do something to increase your bone health so you can do that with like making sure your vitamin d is high your calcium is is adequate so um, postmenopausally they you know they've been going back and forth with, with this recommendation of 12 to 1500 but just make sure your calcium is in a normal range we are all vitamin d deficient this isn't a vitamin d talk but please everyone you should be on vitamin d every single day if you're in a sunny area 
I really believe everybody should be on 5,000 minimum a day. So um, uh, talk to your doctors about checking your levels. You want your vitamin D levels to be above 50 and um, vitamin D is very important for bone health just to kind of piggyback off of that question that Lori asked. So um, the other thing too is the weight. So what can you take? So you can take, there are some oral supplements that you can take. Um, oh, it's escaping me. There is one that's a natural supplement. I re I'll remember it um, before we're, we're done, I'm sure. Um, oh Lord, totally escaping me. Um, but there is a, a supplement that you can take that is a natural estrogen. You can go to any any natural um, store like uh, that you may have in your area and they will tell you what it is and you can take that. You just gotta be careful because everybody doesn't you know, get the same dose. So you have to be careful how much you take. Plus, if you take estrogen, you should have progesterone too. So I don't love that, you know, the oral supplements at all for the reasons we talked about the hypercoagulation and also just their dosing isn't right. The best thing to do is to to is to try to get to try to get the bioidenticals from somewhere somehow, and if not, maybe you can get your doctor to write a cream which you can um, put on your hands and um, and that can work as well. And but I think the pricing is about the same. Um, can you? So I always get the question: Can I just keep eating these and and you know get my hormones that way? <laughs> well, first of all, if you eat enough yams to bring your hormones up, you'll turn orange, and that is non attractive. So don't do that. And um, secondly, you're not going. It's going to take forever to get get it up uh, high enough because they have to take these and they have to process them and pulverize them. So um, unfortunately, there's no food source that I know of that that gets you there from a testosterone standpoint. But I'll keep investigating that because I think that's a good question. Well, um, okay, so let's see. Wow, this is so great. Thank you so much for all this engagement. Thank you, William, for stepping on. It's good to have some some male um, <laughs> some male um, representation here because we we I'm going to tell you guys we do a ton of hormones for men. It is huge. There are so many men that are low in T. If you have if you have a, a, a brother or um, a husband or a friend who has a big belly, they are definitely going to be low in testosterone because it just kind of goes hand in hand and they're going to be high in estrogen. And here's the thing that's really important that you should know. If a man is low in testosterone, the risk of getting prostate cancer is four times higher. Okay. So you want to replace that testosterone. It makes them feel better. It makes them move more. A lot of times men with low testosterone, I don't know why I'm going off on this one, but um, some, something just triggered me for that. Men with low testosterone are just, they don't want to get off the couch. They don't want to move. They're not part of life. Um, they just feel bleh. So if you can get them to replace that, you're going to get, you're going to get that person back in, uh, in the swing of things and back in life again. So um, very, very important. Um, okay, so there are a couple things here that um, I know I missed. So let me go back. You are so welcome, Lori, my love. Um, Christine Gordon. Wendy Santa rocks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I recently started going to her. It's the best decision I made in a long time. Aw, thank you so much, Christine. That is so sweet. Um, okay, I thought I saw another question. I think somebody asked about what age should you start this? Um, I think Kate might have asked that. Yeah, what age do people start hormone treatments? That is a great question because it's. I'm going to tell you, it's younger than you think. So when we as women, so we'll talk about women and men, I don't think it's good for men to get testosterone um, until they're in their late 30s. Um, we don't really start it until about 40, and here's why. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I should share this with you. I'm going to because that's how I am. Um, when we first started doing hormones, we started getting tons of phone calls from this group of weightlifters that, that were in the New York City, New Jersey area. And it was like they all wanted and they were young, like in their 20s, and they, they heard we were doing testosterone pellet form and they all wanted it for weightlifting. Here's the problem. If you start doing testosterone while your body um, is a man, where your testes are still producing testosterone, you start doing it from the outside, then the sperm count is going to stop and it's going to shut down. You're not going to make, um, you're not going to make as much testosterone anymore and on your own. And so you're going to need it for the rest of your life. So we do not give it to men um, un un until they're 40 and then beyond. By then, most men are done having children. We don't need to worry about sperm count, and um, and then they can get it, um, you know, once or twice a year, and they feel great. So that's a question with men. For women, so this is very interesting. But our testosterone starts to drop down in our 30s, if you can believe it. 
So you know how like um, if you're a woman and you've gone through life and you used to be able to eat whatever you want to and then you start to notice over time that you can't really and then you start to get a little poochy and then there's a little bit here and a little bit on your arms and you're like, what's going on? I'm still eating the same. It's because our testosterone is slowly, slowly, slowly dropping down, which means our metabolism is slowly, slowly, slowly dropping down because testosterone is responsible for muscle. Muscle is responsible for metabolism. So um, I do replace testosterone in, um, in some women in their mid to late 30s and then beyond. So you can get testosterone that early and you're going to feel so much better. And the risks are pretty close to zero with testosterone. It is just such an important hormone um, that helps just about every part of our bodies. Just like we're finding vitamin D is an important hormone for our entire body in terms of immune function, we're finding that t testosterone is an important hormone in terms of overall body function, and it's been missed or maybe hidden, who knows. But either way, it's incredibly important, and you feel so much better when you do it. Okay, we got more comments. Let me see. Um, uh, Alicia, recently started sweating a lot. Please help. Okay. <laughs> um, so first of all, if your sweating is related to menopause, then... You just need to get some, um, you can start with testosterone, um, hormone therapy, and if that doesn't work, then a little bit of estrogen is going to stop just like that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you were here, um, the estrogen will really stop hot flashes and night sweats within days once you get it into somebody through the pellets and the sleep within days. I mean, this is why I love doing it. It's like such a fun thing um, to fix in a person who's been struggling for a long time. Um, you can fix it in a couple of days and and they think you're my, you're their hero <laughs> like you saw you saw me say earlier <laughs> it is just so much fun to do and it is so great um, because I, as I said I'm like a a, a a very good representation of what the hormones um, do I've been doing them for about eight or nine years myself just the testosterone I feel amazing I can still run like I did you know when I was younger and I'm a, if any of you know me you know I'm a runner it's Keeps my mental health straight, makes me not want to kill my kids or my coworkers sometimes. Um, so, so it um, it allowed the testosterone has allowed me to be able to really do the mileage that I want to do and um, and help me sleep, help me feel good um, overall. So, anyhow, hopefully that answers that. Is there a natural option for both? Okay, so this is a natural option, Alicia, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure that that is what you're asking, but just so you know, just in case you didn't see my two friends here, the yams, the bioidentical hormones are from yams, so they are a natural option. Is If you're asking, is there anything that you can get from like a na natural supplement company that, um, that replaces, there's nothing I know of that replaces testosterone, I wish I did. There is, um, there are some things that replace estrogen, but they're, they're tough because they can overshoot and if you're taking them orally, you have to always watch about estrogen orally and blood clots. So there's nothing that I can say um, that I recommend. Now, food-wise, eat your yams. You know, that is one way to get them because they are bioidentical. But again, you're not going to be able to eat enough to, to reach those levels, unfortunately. I wish I had a, a better answer for you. Okay. Um, I already feel noticeably better. All right. I'm not sure who that's from. Oh, Christy. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that, Christy. Um, okay, let's see. These are awesome questions, you guys. Thank you so much. All right. So I think I got to all the ones that I had here. Um, okay. Well, I want to show you guys two more things before we close out. Uh, the first one is, well, actually, I want to talk to you about something first. Let's go through the myths, and then I want to show you a picture because a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'm gonna have you hang on that while you listen to six myths of hormone therapy. All right, so take the time and answer them in the questions. First question, testosterone is a male hormone only, yes or no? Anyone, anyone? If you've been listening, you know that is not only for men, it is women. And actually, I will tell you, for women, it is our dominant hormone. You never hear this. But um, a healthy 20-year-old woman has six to 10 times more estrogen, or sorry, more testosterone than they do estrogen. So why aren't we hearing about this? I don't know. It's strange, isn't it? 
Um, but yes, it is a hormone that is so important for men and women. And I don't know if you remember me saying, but it is a brain hormone. So we use testosterone to cure Parkinson's disease. We use it to cure and saying cure, yes, cure dementia. They've done studies on testosterone along with a low carb diet to reverse certain forms of dementia and even moderately affected people with Alzheimer's disease. We use it for brain uh, trauma. So close headed brain trauma, brain injuries, it helps with that. Anything to do with the brain, any foggy brain, any even COVID brain. So I don't know if any of you have seen um, some of the um, side effects either related to the vaccine or to COVID itself that gives you that kind of like foggy brain. We know it's related to the spike proteins and um, testosterone actually helps that if you can believe it. So it's a super duper important hormone and um, we should all have it. Another little thought is that you may have noticed if you've ever gone to a nursing home, there's so many more women on the dementia floor than there are men. And you may think, oh, well, women live longer. Okay, yeah, we live a little longer. But the, the reason why we have so much more dementia is because we lose our testosterone in menopause, okay? Most of it is made by our ovaries. When our ovaries decline, we don't make any more. And that's why we start to have all these symptoms and we start to not be able to remember words. So, um, and then increased risk of dementia. So that's number one, okay. I know, Christy, wow, is right. Okay, number two, um, testosterone causes prostate cancer, yes or no? Because that is something you always hear. Oh, I can't get testosterone because it's going to give me prostate cancer. So the answer is no. And Christy, I don't, Christine, I don't know if you're answering no to the last one or this one, but the answer is no. As a matter of fact, well, I'm not going to tell you, but you'll see. There's a pattern here. So low testosterone, if you remember me saying, triples your risk of prostate cancer. So you want to replace testosterone in men, it will prevent prostate cancer. It's the higher estrogen that we see in men who have low T that really leads to prostate cancer we're finding. So um, that is another myth. Okay, this one, all right. <laughs> oh, thank you, Christy, and thank you, um, Christine, for answering that, and thank you, Kay, for answering that. Um, and Alicia and whoever else I can't see. Okay, next question. Hormone replacement therapy for women involves estrogen only. How many of you have thought that in the past? I used to think that. But what you're learning is, any takers? Yes, no? The answer, of course, is no. It doesn't. You've heard. It can actually involve only testosterone most of the time. So um, and we convert a lot of testosterone. So what we'll do as women is if we give testosterone in hormone replacement therapy, 85% to 90% of us convert some of it to estrogen, which is enough we need to take care of our estrogen symptoms. So look at all these smart people answering no. Good job. All right. So next one, we've got three more. Myth number four is testo testosterone is dangerous to the heart. Yes or no? This is something that really irritates me because I hate when, if you know me, you know that I hate when misinformation is out there. And about four years ago, so the answer first of all is no. Testosterone is actually, um, is actually um, protective to the heart. It does three different things that protect the heart. And um, I was going to tell you a story, I'll tell you it. About four years ago, there was a false study that was put out in Europe about testosterone causing harm to the heart. And all of the doctors that um, were cardiologists rebuked that study and it got retracted. And here's the thing, they didn't want men and in many cases women getting testosterone replacement therapy because as we get older, we need it. So um, it ended up being, um, being retracted and, um, and uh, I think, I really personally think it was put out there to, to scare people away from getting things like bioidentical hormones, which make you feel better, which make you lose weight, which make you get off your meds so you don't need to rely on big pharma. There, I said it, but it's true. Okay, testosterone does three things for the heart that are good. It increases nitrous oxide, which is, um, causes the heart, the vessels to vasodilate, which is a good thing for the heart. It decreases bad cholesterol production, LDL, and it actually decreases triglycerides. So here's another thing that might floor you. Testosterone actually helps um, to reverse diabetes. Hmm, why would they ever not want us to take testosterone? Hmm, so strange. So um, it is absolutely cardioprotective. It is the opposite. 
All right, two more myths. That's right. The heart is a muscle, Laura. You are so right. So if the heart's a muscle, wouldn't it make sense that, sense that testosterone, which increases muscle mass, might actually be good for the heart? Hmm, I don't know. Makes sense to me. Absolutely. And it does help. So, okay, two more. Hormone replacement therapy increases the risk of breast cancer, yes or no? This is a question I get all the time. Does hormone replacement therapy increase the risk of breast cancer? Hmm. What do you guys think? Hi, Lenore. No, Lenore, you got it right. No, <laughs> you are absolutely right. It actually, especially if you do testosterone alone, um, it actually prevents breast cancer or protects you from breast cancer. And you guys know, I'm very open. I share with you, I'm a breast and colon cancer survivor. Testosterone decreases the risk of both of those cancers. So um, they had a study actually, um, a Dayton study. It was a 10 year study of testosterone on over a thousand women. They studied it, these folks um, and looked at all cancer risks for 10 years. 39% decrease in breast cancer, okay? So absolutely no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Um, okay, and finally, um, and we answered this one in someone who had factor five Leiden um, who asked a question, um, estrogen in um, bioidentical hormones causes blood clots and strokes, yes or no? So I am going to show you, in case you didn't know, that all, the answer to all six of these myths were no or false. So you all got them right and you get 100%. Um, estrogen only increases blood clots if it's given in oral form because it goes through the liver and causes clotting. If you give estrogen in either a patch where it goes directly into your skin or you do it in pellet form where it goes directly into your bloodstream, it bypasses the liver, does not increase your risk of blood clots at all, zero. And testosterone does not increase your risk of blood clots at all, period. So um, you can see here all the many advantages to doing this. Okay, you guys are a super smart class. I am so proud of you. All right, we're gonna close with a picture. <laughs> Yay, Kate! Absolutely, smart folks. But all, I, I gotta tell you, all my patients are really smart. I don't know how I get so lucky, and they're awesome too. So you must be, if you're friends of my patients, or if you got here by even the internet, you must be smart. Here's a picture. Let me see if I can get this up here where you can see it. All right, you ready? This is your last quiz question. Here we go, hold on. Can I, I have to move the opposite way. Which 60-year-old twin is on pellet replacement therapy? Is it Carol or Anne? Let me see if I can get a little closer. So let me tell you a story about these two girls. They are actually um, identical twins from California and they followed them from age 50 to 60. One of them took hormones and one of them didn't. Which one do you think took them? And Lenore, you are absolutely right, it's Anne. All right, so I want you to remember this picture because as, if you're a woman, you can either live a life like Carol is living or you can live a life like Anne is living. Now, we're all gonna age. We're all gonna, as women, eventually hit menopause, as men, andropause, or if you're a man who has extra weight, you're gonna hit it really early. I even have some 20 year olds who have very, very low T, and, um, and um, we have to work on weight loss to get that T back up. But either way, you can live your life one way, or you can live it another way. So um, I would implore you to strongly consider finding a way to get your hands on some form of bioidentical hormone um, so that you can live your life like Anne is living. And it is, you know, truly you can tell by looking at her, she's taking a bite out of life and um, doing great. All right. Well, you guys, again, got that right. So I am going to say goodbye. I just had a freaking ball. I hope you did too. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Hi, Jen. You missed all the fun. We just finished. But I'll fill you in, Jen, even though you know. So Jen is my one of my nurses, and she is the smartest thing you'll ever meet. If you have any questions when you're at our office about just about anything, she can answer them for you. All right. So thank you again so much for joining. Um, it has really been a ball. I love talking about this stuff, and I'm happy to answer questions in the future, too. Just pop on when this gets posted, and you can ask any questions you think about afterwards, and I'd be happy to answer them. So as I say goodbye... 
Oh, you had dance done? I, well, I hope you worked that, you worked off some calories there at that dance. Dancing is always a good idea. I do a lot of it. I'm so glad you guys can't see. Um, so uh, as I say goodbye, I just want to tell you to visit our website to learn more about hormones and um, other services we offer. So Medical Weight Loss of New York. So I think it's, oh my God, I don't even know. I don't even know my own website. Anyhow, look under Medical Weight Loss of New York. You'll find it. I'll be better prepared next time. And then follow us on social media. We are on Instagram. We are on um, Facebook, obviously. We are going to be on TikTok sometime very soon. Um, if if my, um, my marketing wonderful social media girl can get some help, <laughs> then we can get on TikTok too. But um, just follow us on all of these platforms. And um, thank you so much for joining. Take care. Bye, guys.